On a day where Solanus wet the bed twice and unveiled an old Chrysler 300 with a 392 and set up a Hellcat and did the King's Hawaiian, I mean, the $100,000 Dodge Charger King Daytona Final Edition, that's more expensive than a Dodge Demon. Ford, on the other hand, shows Solanus how to get it done when it comes to unveiling new products. Not waste your time introducing concept vehicles, but actually a brand new 2024 Mustang that you can actually drive next summer. So let's go over the new Mustang and the big FU Ford just sent Dodge. Others may be bringing down the curtain. We say it's time to raise the curtain on a new performance pony. I know some of you Ford fans are watching this and I'll be respectful of the new 2024 Ford Mustang design. I like how it looks. I'm just not in love with how the new 7 Gen Mustang looks. The car looks like a Mustang had an affair with a Camaro and they both had a baby with some Camaro features. Not saying that as a bad thing, I think it might work in Ford's favor. The Chevy Camaro is expected to be discontinued in 2024 and customers only had the Ford Mustang to get into another V8 with. And a Mustang that looks like a Camaro could persuade customers to get in bed with Ford. Because on the other hand, Dodge must be wetting their pants right now at the scene Ford's reveal. We all remember three days of Speed Week presentations and there was nothing to be excited for. We get a $200,000 classic Charger shell, $25,000 Charger convertible option, an Alfa Romeo Dodge Hornet, six crappy final dishes that you can't spec, limited allocations, and a Charger Daytona Banshee electric vehicle that has an exhaust system. And now we have no idea when Dodge will even show any 2024 models with their new inline six hurricane engine. But while Dodge has dropped the ball from once being the king of reveals to holding press conferences about crossovers and stage kits that still hasn't happened, Ford has better plans. And you gotta hand it to Ford, no matter if you like the brand or not. To introduce a next-gen pony car in 2024 without any electrified options, Ford has some balls, and they weren't afraid to call out Dodge and Solanus either. Pressure was on for sure, uh, but we have kept the spirit of Mustang. We have got that V8 soundtrack. We've got the manual transmission. We've got that open-air, top-down fun. Yeah, performance is everything. It is our legacy. It is our future. It's much more than zero to 60 times. It's the rumble of the V8. It's three pedal driving. <laughs> it's carving the canyons. Let's get into the hardware. Starts with the V8, five liter, gen four, at 480 plus horsepower. The most powerful Mustang GT ever. Next, the manual <laughs> lives. <laughs> Hashtag save the manual. Hashtag save the manual. <laughs> Performance is our legacy, as I said. And this is evidence, it's our future. Others may be bringing down the curtain. We say it's time to raise the curtain on a new performance pony. Let's take a look. Uh, it starts with the most powerful coyote ever, targeting 500 horsepower. 500 horsepower. That is mated with a tried and true manual transmission from Tremec. Ford unveiled a new Mustang with only ICE engines, no hybrids, no electric versions. Straight gasoline love and with a manual transmission. Unlike our friends at Dodge that wants to keep 2024 as a secret, but we all know from leaks that they are planning on dropping the Hemis out of the next gen cars. But I wouldn't be surprised if they won't add a Hemi back to the lineup. If you watched this video in the past, you know Dodge has designed the new Hurricanes to bolt in the same location as the Hemi engines. Prime example being the Grand Wagoneer, offering both a Hemi and a Hurricane option. And if Dodge doesn't offer the Hemi in the next gen car, I'm pretty sure they're going to be SOL. The new Charger Daytona wasn't exactly the sexiest thing revealed, and a Horner is basically an Alfa Romeo wearing a Dodge face mask. And even the technology in the new Dodge cars 
wasn't really that memorable other than the power shot mode. Now on the Mustang on the other hand, two new features any fan would love. First, you can rev your engine from your key fob. You can rev your throttle directly from the palm of your hands from your key fob. <laughs> Super <laughs> cool. No more having to get in the car and rev the engine while everybody else is in behind your car. You can use a new remote rev feature and stand with the crowd while your car is revving. I know the tree huggers are gonna love this feature. You also get an electronic drift stick for some good old fashioned swinging and Mustang around. Also on the inside, you get a large instrument cluster that stretches to the center of the dash. Now, I don't know why these manufacturers are getting lazy and are just putting a big screen in front of the dash and don't do anything to make it fit in the dash no more. These guys need to stop just sticking these huge screens in places that don't fit. But if you look at the screen some more, you see some little nuggets as well. You'll see that the GT gets a line lock feature. Looks like pretty much anything you can think of in this car can be customized from the steering to the exhaust note to the suspension and to interior LED colors. As far as the engines are concerned, the next gen Mustangs will have updated EcoBoost and the GT will get the 5.0 liter V8 engine that will have around 480 horsepower. The 302 in the Scat Pack is 485 horsepower. A regular Mustang GT is going to be able to smoke a Scat Pack next year. And the new Dark Horse Mustang will take it a step higher with 500 horsepower coming out of its V8. And it can be had with a six speed manual transmission as well. I assume the Dark Horse is going to be the replacement for the Mach 1 in Ford's lineup. Probably to drop confusion with the Mustang Mach E. The Dark Horse will get multiple versions, like a dedicated track version, that'll be the Dark Horse S, and then the Dark Horse R will be a dedicated grassroots racer. If I was to grab a Mustang, it'll for sure be a Dark Horse version. Get a murdered out car with a six speed and sit on for like a year or two until Ford hopefully brings back a GT500 like car. I think the Mustang in a higher performance trim like the GT500 will look crazy good. But at least with Ford, we don't have to guess if these 2024 cars will come out. These aren't concept models. And on Ford's website, they said we will see the new Mustang summer of 2023. Dodge on the other hand, it's a little more complicated than that. I leaked that Dodge was going to move to the Windsor semi plant with the Pacifica. And the problem now is when will Windsor go down so they can start building mules and get testing? Last I heard, engineers were at the plant, but I haven't heard a firm date when they'll start with the new Stella Large line that the Challenger and Chargers will ride on. And as far as I know, the 300 will return. It should be about the same size as the Charger that we saw in this slide during EV day. But Chrysler said they are going to EV only, so you better snatch up one of these final 300C cars before it's too late. Dodge showed the Charger under the sheets in this video, and as I pointed out, it has the same bumper and light design as the current Charger car. And it's basically just an update to the current design. I think the Charger Daytona was really just a smokescreen for Dodge to hide behind while stuff is still changing in the background. Because if Dodge had this rolling car sitting around since July 2021, there is no excuse why we couldn't see this car during day three of Speed Week in August of 2022 when they built the Banshee and showed it on that day. But Dodge is running out of time. I hope they don't wait until next summer when the new Mustang hit the streets to finally show the next gen Challenger and Charger. I asked this poll a week ago and over 2,000 people voted. If Dodge dropped a Hemi, only 16% said they would stick with Dodge, while 45% said they're going to Chevy, and 39% said they're going to Ford. If Ford brings out a rear wheel drive V8 sedan with all the same Mustang engines, I think Dodge is going to be in very serious trouble. The V8s account for a lot of car that Dodge sells, and a lot of people put up with a 16 year old design year after year after year only because of the Hemi engine. It's really only FCA's fault that they did not develop any new engines by now and caused them to get sold off to a Stellantis. There was plenty of time to make a newer, more efficient Hemi engine and make hybrid assisted cars to get around government regulations. A few years ago, 
If someone asked me which brand would keep the V8 the longest, I would have hands down said that the Dodge will find a way to keep the Hemi in their vehicles longer than anyone else. And here we are 15 months before the Hemi cars will be discontinued and we still haven't seen anything from Dodge that will leave you confident. Chevy may discontinue the Camaro, which maybe they should reconsider depending on what Dodge does, but at least the C8 got a new V8 and the Z06 now has the most powerful naturally aspirated engine. And then we have Ford introducing their next Mustang with a V8 and no hybrid or EV drivetrains for now. But let me know what you guys think about the new Mustang. I think it's cool, it has a V8, a six speed manual, rear wheel drive, just what you need for an enthusiast. And I like how Ford, even with an uncertain future with internal combustion engines, at least show that they are committed to the brand that actually listens to customers and will keep the V8s around. That's more than I can say for Dodge, who claims they listen to customers, but don't show a 2024 Challenger or Charger with a V8. Instead, show us an EV muscle car with an exhaust.